This is the Daily Tech News Show for Friday, December 27th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Studio Snubs, I'm Shannon Morse. Uh, from Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And from the Podfeet Podcast Empire, this is Allison Sheridan. And the I'm clever. Oh, sorry, Roger. Oh, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, and uh, I'm Roger Shane, the show's producer. The uh, clever folks among you may realize that this is exactly the same assemblage of people that we did last year for the predictions episode. And this is something I love to do. Uh, we did it at Buzz Out Loud. We do it uh, at Daily Tech News Show. We did it at Tech News Today. It's a chance for us to look at the predictions we made last year and see just how great we did how amazingly accurate all of our predictions were. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being able to, to come back together uh, today and look at your predictions straight in the eye and decide whether they were true or not. Uh, we'll, we'll sort of take a community approach to that. And, and Sarah, we'll start with you. Uh, what was <laughs> your first of your two predictions last year? The first of my two predictions uh, was henceforth. Apple will start stop rather selling the HomePod and instead insert Siri into competing smart speakers. I didn't have a lot of faith in Apple at the time, not because the HomePod isn't a good product, but because they were late to the game and it was also very expensive. I did not get this correctly. Uh, what ended up happening over the last year, as you might recall, back in April, Apple lowered the price of HomePods uh, down to about $299. Uh, it was $349. And you think, okay, well, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're hurting a little bit. Not that I would be rooting for the HomePod to die, but I was kind of thinking of my tech prediction, thinking I'm so smart. No one else thought that this was going to happen. And the market share as of August, um, according to certain data, had not really risen based on that price cut. HomePod was about 5%, way behind, obviously, Amazon and Google competing products. But this did not happen as, as I thought it would. HomeKit has been added to a variety of smart TVs over the last year. But, uh, but Apple did not do the 180 that I thought might happen. I think that was a logical guess. I would have, <laughs> maybe they should have. I feel like stopping selling the HomePod was a decent bet. I could see them pulling it off the market possibly or or replacing it with something new like sure. HomePod 2, right? Uh, they didn't do that. That's surprising to me. Siri, I feel like eventually they might do that, but it was just, it just wasn't going to happen this soon. Yeah, I uh, I can't take credit for this. I thought, can I sort of take credit for them at least? <laughs> Give it a little bit of a price drop? No. no. I got this one wrong. I just got it wrong. All right. What about your so, next one? Uh, did next you do better on your other one? <laughs> well, I wish I could say yes, Tom. Uh, <laughs> I predicted in the smart uh, video devices category, such as Facebook Portal, uh, they will be shunned by the public and will not last the year. Mm. Now, I will say Facebook Portal... Hasn't gotten a lot of love by anybody that I know, but it no. is alive and well. And a lot of Black Friday deals for Facebook Portal um, and competing video products. Um, Echo Show, for example. Nest Home. Yeah. Nest Home. Alive and well. Alive and well. I don't. Uh, and I think I believe that it was either in our tech predictions of last year or some sort of a episode of DTNS around that time. I kind of said. I just don't really get it. And I got more than one frustrated emailer in just saying, well, just because you don't get it doesn't mean that it's not really helpful for me. And that is true. And that is why I will go ahead and eat my lunch here because I'm over for 2. Yeah. The, and this one, it went the opposite. Instead, we saw more models. We saw Amazon come up with multiple versions of different screen sizes and the same for, for Google. And in fact, integrated into the Nest brand and, and all of that. So, so it's, you know, sometimes you, you make a bet and things just go the opposite way. Has anyone oh. on our panel uh, uh, either bought the Facebook portal or had a lot of experience with it? Because I have not. I know that there's been some kind of, well, it's Facebook, you know, this is the last company that I'm going to buy one of these things from. But I get the impression that the company feels pretty confident that it's going to con continue to capture some market value. Yeah, I, I, I have not, but it's more uh, because I don't trust Facebook's hardware 
because they don't really have a track record with it than it is necessarily any particular a uh, fear of Facebook data harvesting, considering that the other key players in the space are Amazon and Google, which are doing the same thing, just in different ways. <laughs> Right. I also have not had any experience with the Facebook portal, but I have tried other devices like Lenovo has a smart hub and also the Google one as well. And I feel like that market is kind of exploding right now. We've seen a whole bunch of them. I mean, not just from the major players, but some of the smaller players as well, because it's so easy to integrate the smart voice assistants now. So I think if anything, we're going to see that market grow larger and larger. I didn't realize that it was really taking off until one of my fam family members asked for an Echo Show for Christmas. And I was like, really? That's a thing? <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you want to know what, uh, uh, Allison, that has been the gift that I have gotten for uh, it's all of my my wife's family out in Ohio and, and my mom and brother out in, in Florida, they're all getting Echo Shows. Uh, so sorry to spoil Christmas if any of them are listening. <laughs> <laughs> what are, well, but it's play? December 27th, Justin, so they already know. You yeah, know, I right. think I think part of it is, A, it's just another device, and especially for my, my brother and his wife that have two kids, it's just another device that they can use uh, either in the kitchen or to distract the kids. And then it's also... It, it, you know, it is one of those form defines function kind of things where, yes, of course, we all have FaceTime or, or Duo or something like that to do voice chat. But having a little dedicated mirror where you can communicate with uh, friends and family is uh, an, an attractive idea. I think for whatever reason, 2019, it clicked despite the fact these things have been out for years. I think if you'd narrowed it to Facebook portal wouldn't last the year, I would have. I would have supported this. It still did. Uh, but I, I can't imagine Facebook portal lasts yeah. another year. Like that, come on. I, I, well, that's I what know, I thought I a know. year ago. Yeah, right. I, I believe that this prediction came from Facebook portal because at the time it was brand new and it didn't make a lot of sense to me. And so I sort of said, well, this, you know, Facebook portal dies. It's probably because the form factor is not necessary for a lot of folks. But as we're hearing now, uh, people love it. All right, Shannon, let's move over to your two predictions. Uh, how'd you do? Yeah, well, speaking of user security, uh, my first one was paranoia will create regulations in the privacy and tech se sector, sweeping more countries than just the EU's GDPR. So I suspected that we would see major tech companies hit with large scale fines from GDPR. Now, for that last part, if I said just large scale fines, I would have gotten it right because we did see the <laughs> FTC fine yeah. Facebook $5 billion for a privacy settlement. So we did see that. Uh, we also did see a real estate company in Germany get fined via the GDPR for 14.5 million euros. So, you know, that's a decent amount of money, but it's not a tech company. It's not a large tech mm -hmm. company. Um, and as far as hearing about sweeping more countries with GDPR-esque type of legislation, we haven't seen that yet. Um, it's been very slow. I mean, it's government work, so go figure. But we did see the CCPA in California. Uh, that is going to be enacted in January, and that's the California Consumer Privacy Act, I believe it's called. Uh, and a lot of people are suspecting that that might end up making the rest of the U.S., uh, states start to take security more seriously and maybe create other legislation. But we haven't seen anything sweeping for any other countries like we have in Europe. So I, there's some things moving. There's traction as far as my predictions go, but none of it I could say like straight up like, yes, I got this right. We are seeing a lot of movement for proposing federal legislation now that CCPA is coming in uh, exactly. on both sides of the aisle. So, so you may see that still happen. What do what do you think, panel? Do we give her partial credit on any of this? I think we have to give her partial credit because yeah. of the CPA stuff. Yeah, I'm 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 awarding partial credit. <laughs> Thanks, I, guys. I I too believe you deserve partial credit. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, you may you may go for a win there. How'd you do on your other one? 
I, I don't think I'll go for a win on oh, this no. one. Uh, my second <laughs> one was that AI will be used in cyber espionage campaigns and social engineering, uh, which may have happened, but we did not see any kind of public publicized news about anything like that happening. Uh, I did read that there are a lot of businesses trying to start using AI to thwart hackers, uh, but nothing really vice versa. So I'm still waiting for this to happen. I feel like it's still going to happen, but 2019 was just not the years for hackers to figure out AI. So we're we're still waiting on that factor. Keep this one rolling, huh, Shannon? Yeah, we'll keep this one rolling. <laughs> now, Allison, you did make a, was it a prediction that you made in 2017? Well, this is bad for me to try to remember, but according to our notes, we say that <laughs> Allison gets a quarter of a point if evidence proves AI was used to social engineer hacks and campaigns in 2017, but that doesn't make any sense. We must have met 2019 or 2016. Yeah. I'm not exactly. 2016. Yeah. So if we <laughs> say it's 2016, I mean, technically the conversation uh, reports that uh, highly sophisticated micro-targeting operations uh I lost my place. Relied on big data and machine learning to influence people's emotions. Different voters receive different messages based on predictions about their susceptibility to different arguments. That would suggest that I got credit. What do you guys think? I would uh, think so. Yeah. I'm not I mean, sure I even <laughs> understand what I said before, so I'm stretching here. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So so basically, the only thing is that whenever these kind of things wind up getting reported, you have to sort of take a grain of salt with sophisticated micro-targeting because it probably just means they bought Facebook ads. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but did that, it use machine learning? If it, if it used machine learning, then yeah. No, they were they were crunching the the, the numbers. And again, it was probably fairly routine of just saying like if you're in a facebook group that uh or or people from this facebook group uh would probably be po'd about a certain language but yeah i i think it's i i think it 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 it, it tracks i don't know i i think you 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 would have had to have an election break in or something like that uh mm -hmm. i i might i might hold the line a little bit on this one i'm not sure because this is just emotions, not actually affecting. Like attempted not, manipulation not a of, of behavior is different than, than a hack into a campaign or social I, engineering. As far yeah. as my context goes, I was thinking more along the lines of hackers hacking into like industrial control systems with mm -hmm. AI, and we didn't see anything like that. Um, so I wasn't thinking along the same lines as Allison. Uh, but I think both of those... Uh, have a place. I mean, it's definitely going to become a concern if it's not that much of a concern yet. Yeah, you may have just been too early now. on that one. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm I'm going to have to side with Tom on this. I don't think I get the quarterback. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, you were trying to surf in on Shannon's anyway, so it would have been just bonus <laughs> material to begin with. Right. All right, Allison, let's actually look at your predictions yourself. Start with your first one. How'd you do? I may not even need that quarter point. My first prediction was Google will finally come out with a single unified messaging service that actually works. It will fail to get immediate adoption because no one trusts them not to drop things anymore. Eventually, it will be widely adopted, but not till 2020. So, so <laughs> they did start to move people to messages and they did right. uh, they did something with uh, RCS where they're, they're trying to improve messages. Yeah, so they got rid of Allo and Hangouts, so they consolidated down to five messaging apps. So that was that was clearly in the direction I was going. Um, but, I mean, it's not like they invented RCS or anything, right? They're just saying, let's put RCS They're in just messages. Yeah, and yeah. they only did that, a, a, what, a month and a half ago, the middle of November. Mm -hmm. um, right. So technically, it might be the single unified messaging service that actually works. And it was not universally ad widely adopted. What do you think? And, and they are retiring Hangouts. They yes, haven't right. done it yet, but they've announced <laughs> that it is sunsetted. Duo, they've turned into like, this isn't a messaging service. This is FaceTime. This is a phone yeah. calling, uh, video calling. I think you get at least partial credit on this. I would give her full points, man. That's, I mean, it was a very good prediction if you think about RCS. I've already adopted RCS for my non-signal, you know, non-pro encryption 
friends and family. <laughs> and uh, so far, it's working great. So I, I do think that we're going to see pretty good adoption next year, uh, given that messenger, messages does work. And I can say that from experience. So actually works. Not widely adopted because they just did it a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I give you I give you thumbs up on this one. Yeah, I yeah. think I think we're all in the same boat. We're gonna give you thumbs up on that one. What about your next one? Well, Apple's TV app will come to another service like Roku or Amazon. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a one hundred. You are number one. She's got two for two. Wow. And, and and it came to Roku and Amazon. And Amazon, I know. <laughs> it's like, how did it's I Samsung? Do it? Just to you know, icing on the cake. How did you uh, know have... these things? Oh, I crowdsourced my predictions. I'm terrible <laughs> at this. I didn't write any of these. <laughs> well, this this was the pick because uh, uh, at this point last year, we we were aware of Apple TV that they were probably going to launch in the next year, and that would be the reason. That is the reason why they wound up putting their their tv app on the other services but uh still full credit for for knocking this one out of the park this may be i you know we'd have to go back and, and double check this may be the most correct <laughs> prediction that we've ever had like there's no room for interpretation here like apple's tv app did come to roku and amazon and full it was stop. specific too i mean it wasn't a general one right yeah no it was pretty it was very specific you even named names so uh Correct. well done 110%. Uh, sure and, and credit with the Nocilla castaways who wrote it. <laughs> they had to do this too. Like the, it, it's possible that they, they might not have done it because they're Apple, but to make Apple TV plus successful, they had to be doing this. And, and so it makes right. sense to me that they did. Right. All right, Justin, Robert Young, we turn to you now. How did you do with your first one? Not so good, Al. Uh, Snap <laughs> will sell which not only did it not sell to anybody, but it has uh, uh, tripled its stock value since I made this. <laughs> <laughs> Making it less likely to be sold. Far less likely. Yeah, I mean, uh, this was pretty much at the height of, uh, you know, there was another push on the spectacles last year. Instagram had so thoroughly kind of... Uh, uh, taken a lot of the, the uh, market share, at least of those stories thing. But that being said, stories have endured. This is just a, a tremendous way that people like to share. So if uh, uh, every other service is adding stories-esque versions uh, of, of themselves so they can continue to add users, then Snap has not only uh, gotten themselves uh, uh, into a good space, but the, the business seems to be thriving. I feel like I'm surprised how well Snap is doing a year later. I really did. I wasn't sure they would be sold, but I really did feel like Snap was fading away. And uh, they haven't. Uh, in fact, if, if anything, they, they've reconsolidated their position and, and, and weathered the storm and seem to be on, on the rise again a little bit. Well, they did have a big surge in those lenses. You remember there was there was a, like a couple of week period where everybody was a woman turning into a man and vice versa and looking old or whatever. Everybody went bananas, at least for a couple of weeks in a row there. I, I mean, I know my family. All we did was sit around, make each other laugh for a couple of weeks with it. Yeah. You know, it, it certainly was able to maintain its its relevancy. And also uh, there is uh, just a very winning position for them as their user base does get a little older. And we've something that I've noticed a lot in in 2019 is a social strata for demographics and social networks that it's like it in the early days we were so used to it's like, Oh no, the 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 youth will go to the new thing and we will all move in a herd. And that was just the early adopters because Facebook is an older demo, Twitter is a a, a middle of the road demo and now you're seeing Snap and Instagram and uh TikTok be their own kind of social strata for uh, age-wise. So Snap will just live on. And as they get older, you know, people who are selling cars will be able to sell them cars. <laughs> I wonder how much the, the 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 TikTok folks and the rise of TikTok will eventually eat into Snap to the point that it is suffering. Hasn't happened yet, even the, though TikTok the, has, has 
the 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 thing that Snap has, no matter how weird it is to use, uh, it is a vital messaging app for mm-hmm. its key demographic, and that is something that, as of now, TikTok really isn't. TikTok is shooting, editing, watching videos, uh, and Snap is just an integral part of life for many uh, for many people. I wonder if TikTok isn't helping Snap in an odd way where people are looking at TikTok, consuming the videos and then wanting to talk to someone about it in a similar form, right? They seem to kind of go hand in hand, sort of like Facebook and Twitter for us old people. (laughs) Yeah. calling old. How many people here (laughs) use Snapchat? I haven't opened up Snapchat in over a year. Same. Yeah, it's been. I it's even been. get notifications when someone's added me as a friend, and I'm so lazy I just haven't turned those off. So I've <laughs> I've gained quite a few friends over the last year, and I haven't opened it once. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> that is that is a big mood, big mood. <laughs> my now, my, mind you, these are not friends that I actually know. No, so, yeah. uh, so no. there's so there's that. I don't right. actually. We are, I tried we are, to friend you on Snap, and you never friended me back. So, oh crap. <laughs> oh. It's an Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> moment. Crap. <laughs> I think it, it's probably the. Well, it's open now. It's great. There's a lot of activity. <laughs> I think we use our um, we use Snapchat in the family maybe once or twice a day, and wow. it, it's sort of like you know you want to. I, I think part of what I'm doing is I'm pulling away from posting a lot of stuff publicly. I'm getting tired of mm-hmm. like when I send stuff to Facebook. My immediate reaction is that I get drawn into, well, how many likes did I like? Did anybody mm-hmm. comment? And and so I, the people I really care about is my immediate family. And so we send funny pictures to each other and and use it use it like that. That's cool. All right, Justin. What about your second one? All right. Now we're 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 in the market for partial credit. <laughs> my prediction <laughs> was Amazon will be hit with an antitrust case which I use the strong language because those always make for the best predictions. As of now, the the recording of it, uh, of this episode, they have not been officially hit with an antitrust case. However, as reported by Bloomberg, there is a looming possibility that an antitrust, that antitrust scrutiny could come to Amazon's AWS service. So I, 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 and that was only uh, uh, yesterday. <laughs> As of recording. As a, well, th- this is a prediction where we definitely are going to have to drop the veil for a second and admit we're recording this on December 5th because this could become true still by the end of the year. You yeah. could conceivably okay. have the FTC bring the case. And I would venture to say that the fact that the FTC is sniffing around not only in retail, but in AWS means they are going to bring something, some, whether it's an actual yes. antitrust case or some kind of like out of court settlement of a fine that that remains to be seen. But I'm going to give you 90 percent credit on this because something is going to happen. I, and and specifically, the reason why I made the prediction was because there were so many targets with Amazon specifically, and I thought it was going to come to the store where they are not only the the judge of who gets to list, but also the uh, creator of their own products. Uh, uh, so I, I, I assumed that's where it would come. But the fact that AWS is also there, you know, gives me a little bit rounder of a target, but but I'm feeling good about this one. I don't I don't want to be a hard nose here, Tom, but I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Is I, I agree that it probably is going to happen, but I don't think it's we have a, any indication that it's going to happen in the next 25 days. We don't. You're right. It could, so, or it might happen next year, but I, I bring that down from ninety five percent. All mean, right, all right. You, you can't, fair. you can't give them close to full credit when it hasn't happened. I want credit on layaway. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking you want an advance on your salary. Well, listen, right? Justin, and, if you just sign up for my credit card, I will give you one hundred twenty percent credit. I will be the credit card and uh, <laughs> demand credit immediately. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, th- this is one of those where it's like, you are right. You're either 
we're either recording too early or you're right too early. Uh, well, it's, I mean, yeah, it's one I, of those two. I'd add this to yet another uh, uh, bits of my frustration about the slow moving wheels of government. Yeah, yeah. Which and that's, that's been able to do it right on their horse and rode a little sooner. <laughs> Having done these predictions episodes, oh, shoot, every year since 2005, uh, I I have learned to try not to make the prediction that'll be true in five years because, the, you know, so I've had really good predictions that do end up becoming true, but not yeah. for years after my prediction show. Uh, so let's turn to my my predictions from last year. The first one, I think is a hundred percent wrong in every way I can look at it. I said, uh, because I was caught up in this story in December of 2018, I said lots of hand wringing that food delivery will kill traditional sit down restaurant businesses, which there was a little bit of hand wringing in December of 2018. Uh, I don't think the hand wringing actually got any larger over the course of 2019. There's still a little bit of it. Uh, we also haven't seen any big businesses go out. Uh, and and the number of food delivery only businesses hasn't really made a big impact. We haven't really heard about like, oh, there's that one business that only exists on Postmates uh, or anything like that. They exist, but they aren't like top of mind. Uh, instead, what we're just what we're seeing is, the traditional retailers of food like McDonald's, Taco Bell, et cetera, uh, just moving into partnerships with all of these food delivery services. Yeah, I think there are probably some restaurants uh, wringing their hands uh, and, and, and watching inroads being made. Uh, at the same time, I think that this is all being adopted more and more universally. And not that there's anything to be, nothing replaces the restaurant business, it's two different things, right? I mean, you could order food every night and never go to a restaurant, but you probably were already doing that some other way, you know, yeah. but, but before, you know, a lot of these apps uh, came to your town. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't feel like anyone's really talking about saving the restaurants. Well, I, I, you are missing the hand wringing. So obviously that is the, the, the operative phrase here. However, you have seen you know, the the Uber uh, push to to create more of these headless restaurants. Yes, uh, yes. Where you yeah. they are just there for Uber Eats. You don't have any sit down area, and that in the very cost conscious of uh, volatile world of restaurants would be a tremendous way to cut down costs and to actually get things off the ground. So in that, in in in. In a weird way, you're wrong only because you thought people would be upset about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I thought it would start to like, you know, we'd see closed up Applebee's uh, across the across the country, and and that's that's not that that didn't Applebee's happen. will never close down. The place <laughs> will exist after the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, it's like the cockroach <laughs> of restaurants. It's a bar <laughs> <to sell. laughs> All that will exist is our, our cockroaches and yes, the lime chicken. <laughs> should, we, should we get him a, a quarter of a point then? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, you guys are too generous. Uh, I, I do think honest, that I, I, I'm not going to give you anything because also like what you're betting on hand wringing. Like what, yeah. about, what kind of prediction was this anyway? Well, I, I really I had seen a couple stories about mm, food delivery. It's it's causing problems for restaurants that aren't adapting. And I, I really and, and saw these headless restaurants starting to pop up. Uh, mm -hmm. which we still have. And I thought, okay, this is going to be a trend. We're going to see a lot of, a lot of think pieces, you know, a deep dive from vice about the decline. No, we didn't see any of that sort of thing. I, I so. think, I think you might be right next year. This like, may be an example of, I was too I far, think, too far yeah, ahead of the game. I, think I do think what's happening is that food delivery is stealing from different areas than we thought. People still like to go out to a restaurant because they like to go out to a restaurant Yeah, where they're ordering food Sarah, I, you you touched on this. They're ordering food instead of making a frozen dinner, instead of mm -hmm. you know g going through the drive-through. The, it's not yeah, it's the like sit down. A, it's thing. a burrito, not a not. I would like a nice dish of pasta with a glass yeah. of wine. And the place yeah. with the drive-through can easily start doing the food delivery through Uber Eats and Postmates, so they're not negatively affected. Now, uh, Although Allison, I do sometimes order a nice pasta and a glass of wine uh, through Postmates and I pay dearly for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a glass of wine? 
I just in general, you sometimes you're like, you know, what? I feel like being fancy, but I don't want to leave the house. And then later you're like, that was $70 and it was just me. <laughs> huh, that was a bad idea. I had a plate of pasta and a, <laughs> and a, and a very mediocre red. <laughs> All right. I think I did better with my other prediction, though. Uh, I said that 2019 would be the year of wearables. The category will be successful, higher shipments, multiple new form factors. Now, you can argue with me whether it was the year of wearables. Uh, certainly didn't see as many form factor changes as I thought. Uh, but as of Q2, which is the most recent IDC numbers I could find uh, here, we have seen a 28.8% year-over-year growth in wearables. And we certainly are starting to see wearables treated as a growth opportunity to the point of Fitbit being purchased by Google. Now, when you talked about wearables, did that include hearables? No, at the time I wasn't really... Way. I was thinking more about the wrist-worn uh, devices, uh, but yes, now that you say it, of course it includes hearables <laughs> because that is also taking off. And and then, it's then not a new like form factor, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, have we seen any new form factors announced? Not really, not really. Yeah. We've, I mean, earbuds without wires on them is the newest form factor I think we, we've really seen. Uh, it's not, and it's not that new, so. But aren't there Sorry, Tom. Great monitors, Tom? Sorry? I thought one of, I thought one of the, the uh, wireless earbud manufacturers has a heart rate monitor in it, don't they? Yeah, but that's not really a form factor, is it? That's just a well, feature. You took the headphone. I mean, it makes it more like the. I'm really trying to throw you a bone here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate this. It, more, it, it makes it a different form factor, and it's more of a wearable than a hearable, yeah, right? It's a different form factor than on your wrist. Yeah. But maybe not crazy successful. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I deserve at least majority credit because this, this was the year that wearables really did uh, start to to come into the fore more. We talked about it a lot more often than we had been. Pre previously on DTNS, we would talk about wearables. Is it ever gonna catch on? Is there gonna be anything besides the Apple Watch? And and this year we saw uh, big rises from Huawei and Xiaomi and, and even Fitbit and Samsung uh, doing, doing better, all raising their market shares. So it was a good year for wearables. Yeah, I'd give them some credit, but uh, I don't know, Justin's our toughest judge. No, I, I think I think you get you get credit here. Uh, you know, I I don't know exactly how bold of a prediction it was, but, but then again, <laughs> I don't know exactly how bold mine was. So no um, one asked to judge it on boldness. No, it isn't. <laughs> Although I will I will say that uh, uh, Allison's is is the the like highest boldness to correct ratio because that definitely even if there were signs, it went against long-standing Apple tradition, uh, whereas like a successful and growing market will continue to be successful and growing, or a company that has sprawled without regulation will hit, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Rocky Waters are, are more, they are, they are good earners, but they are not, you know, explosive. No, the Apple TV app coming to, I mean, I'll even say like, yeah, there's precedent for this. They they brought iTunes to Windows. They they brought yeah. Apple Music to Android. But those are the exceptions that prove the rule with Apple. Yeah. So this was definitely a uh, uh, highest risk to highest reward prediction. Uh, I don't know if we've ever given a prediction of the year before, but if we did, I, I think that would <laughs> definitely this year stand out from the rest for sure. The Nacilla Castaways gratefully accept your praise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this has been super fun as it always is. So thanks everybody, uh, for joining us, uh, round the horn, uh, let people know where they can find more of what you do. Shannon, starting with you. Uh, twitter.com slash snubs. I'm at snubs on the Twitters and that's where you can always follow me and find out where I'm going, what I'm doing, what convention I'm going to be at. I'll be at CNET by the, or CNET. I'll be at CES by the way. <laughs> CNET will be at CES too, I assume. But, CNET yeah. will. Yeah. A lot of my friends work over there, so I'll definitely be stopping by their booth as well. Uh, and also I wanted to mention snubsy.com slash threat wire. I did just open up a new store where you can buy t-shirts and stickers and stuff like that for threat wire. Uh, all of the contributions go directly back into the show. So uh, since it is the month of giving, I wanted to say thank you so much to my patron supporters of Threatwire and
and everybody who watches and subscribes to that content as well, because I love doing security and privacy and ThreatWire has been very successful because of our community. So thanks everybody. Awesome. Judge Robert Young, what about you? Well, friends, I have a brand new history podcast by the name of Raise the Dead, and you can download it at raisethedeadpodcast.com. It's also where you can find links that go to all of the pod catchers of your choice. Uh, you know, of course, we're we're several episodes into the series by the time that you are listening to this, and everyone loves it. It's the biggest hit of the season. Boy, it's 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 uh, just People are I wish I had predicted how dominant it would be. Oh, oh my God. Those yeah. last few episodes I listened to were amazing. Uh, thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, the Unrestrained praise uh, for Raise the Dead episode three. By the way, I, the, the Nixon episode, uh, definitely my favorite. That um, is the Nixon okay. episode. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. everyone's going to freak out as soon as they get their feast their eyes on young Dick Nixon. <laughs> All right. Allison Sheridan, you keep uh, mentioning the Nocilla Castaways. How does someone become a Nocilla Castaway? Well, you go over to podfeet.com, and uh, my flagship show is the uh, the Nocilla Cast, where the Nocilla Castaways come from. And uh, you can also catch uh, Chit Chat Across the Pond, which is an interview show. And one of my favorite things to do every other week is the Programming by Stealth series with Bart Mushatz, where he's teaching us to program in an audio podcast. Woo Sarah Lane, uh, we're, we're steaming towards the end of the year. Can you believe it? I, <laughs> you better believe it. Yes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful year, um, especially with, with uh, a plethora of guests, not least of which are still with us here on this here show. I'm a little salty right now because my predictions didn't go as planned, but, you know, I was first, so I got my shame out of the way and then got to listen to <laughs> everyone else gloat and get partial credit for stuff that they didn't even deserve. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that Postmates red. You'll be fine. Yeah. No, well, they, they don't deliver out in the sticks where I live now. So I really made some interesting choices this year. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's been it's been a really good year. Hey, you know, Studio Redwoods going strong. Excellent. Uh, folks, we have new Patreon reward merchandise uh, to celebrate our six years of DTNS. Len Peralta created a special six-year anniversary DTNS logo. Uh, you can get it exclusively through our Patreon on a sticker, a poster, a mug, or a t-shirt, depending on which level you back. You just have to back that level for three months. Find out more at patreon.com slash DTNS slash merch. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Write us right now. We're live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC in our regular show. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. See you all back on Monday with our tech predictions for 2020. We're going to do so much better, I swear. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>